today I'm going to try some flexible resin. So the one that I have is from Monocure 3D. It's the Flex 100 and uh, it's clear resin. And I'm going to mix it with the classic Lego. This one is the standard gray. And I'm going to do different mix of standard and flex. We're going to see how the model behave. And uh, we're going to talk a bit more about this one. In terms of price, I got this one on Amazon for around 80 euros. It's twice the price as normal resin. Uh, this one is 500 ml, but one liter is around 40, 40 euros. This one is double the price. That's a bit too much in my opinion. And today we're going to try it on this model. I've made it on Tinkercad really quick. Uh, the goal of the ring is just to have some flexibility test on it. Nothing crazy. And uh, yeah, let's go. Okay, so here I have six ring in total. I have different uh, mix of uh, resin between them from 100% to standard to 100% flex. Okay, so let's start first with 100%. Obviously I've done 100% uh, Illigo Gray. So as you can see here, the print is fine. Like it's not the best possible, those type of resin. And this one was like around eight, eight second exposure. It's not the best, but let's try the flex. I can barely flex it. There is no flex. If I go a bit harder, I'm just gonna break it for sure. So one inconvenient of those one is the chipping. If they take any damage, they're gonna chip. So let's try with the hexagonal knife. I'm just gonna go in and try to pop. There we go. Let's try sanding a little bit. Sanding is pretty good. The resin is really hard and easy to sand, but the inconvenient is the chipping. Obviously, if I try to flex a bit more, I'm gonna break it. There we go. Okay, so this one, this one was 60% standard resin and 33% flex. The print quality came out really nice. I think it's one of the best print that I have at least one of the best. And let's try the flex on this one. I got, I got some, nothing crazy, but I definitely have more flex than the other one. And let's try chipping, let's see if I can chip something. Here when I put the knife inside, I can, I can feel it's way more, it's way softer. And it's still chipping at some point. There is like a break point. But it's it's way softer. I have the feeling a bit like kind of gummy. Let's try sanding. Still work fine. Sanding is pretty good. Okay, let's try to flex it until it breaks. That's pretty good. I have a, a break point here. So this one is what two third flex and one third standard. So 63% of flex, as you can see already. Uh, the print quality is really good as well. And this one has definitely have more flex. The shape retained pretty well, like every time it's coming back as a perfect ring, but I can bend it all the way. Let's try chipping. I can't chip this one. I mean, I can, I can but it's not, there is no breaking point. I'm just having my knife going in. And it's really gummy and kind of... Let's, let's see if I can break it if I push all the way here. Ah, yes. So there, there is a clean cut. But the flexibility was really huge. Even right now, we can see it. It's pretty, pretty, pretty good. This one is 20% uh, standard and 80% uh, flex. 
the print quality is still pretty nice. Uh, I can see like it's definitely not as good as the previous one, but I still have the shape of my ring and I can see the hole and everything. So it's pretty decent. Uh, huge amount of flex, obviously. Let's try chipping. Same thing, really gummy and sticky. Let's see if I can send it. Yeah, it's definitely possible. So even at this point, you can send this resin. It's, you can be able to send it. Let's see if I can break the same as the other one. Yes. So here there is a, a clean cut as well. Basically, if I go all the way here, there is like a breaking tension. But I think it's, it would break by pressing, but not by any shock. Let's go even deeper. This one is 10% standard and 90% flex. Uh, here at this point, even after probably many tests, you can see the shape. I can't retain the shape. Like the print was done from here down and the ring kind of build up, like grow up, even if you compare the size to the size to another one. Like there is, there is a size problem here. So this one has huge amount of flex. I'm not going to be able to chip it as well. Of course I can break it you know, after a cut. Still able to sand a bit. From this point on, 10% after the 20% mark, uh, it's really hard to print. This one didn't fail, I think, but I don't have the shape that I want. I have a huge amount of flex, but I couldn't print what I wanted. I'm still able to break it. Really soft and really flexible, but obviously not really useful. And last, nonetheless, 100% uh, flex. So here that's a disaster, like the shape is completely off. It's really wobbly. I couldn't do anything with it. And I managed to obtain this one after probably four prints. So I had three fail and one like this. I tweaked my setting a lot, but printing 100% flex, I'm not sure if it's possible on a photon, uh, maybe with more tweaking, but it was really hard. And the shape is off. The fail was huge. So it's still breakable. Like you can flex it, but you can't have any tension, as you can see here. There is no real structure on it. The gum is flexible, but it doesn't have any much strength. So 100% not useful and not really strong. So after all those tests, I can probably say like 50% standard and 50% flex is a pretty good mix for the print quality, the flexibility. But if you just want to add a bit of like leeways on your print, and what I mean is like, okay, if you have a 100% standard, you drop it on the floor, it's gonna shatter. If you had maybe 20% flex, you're gonna avoid like those kind of catastrophes. So I would say 20% flex and then 80% the classic resin that you use. You will probably like help your print to get some a bit will be more forgiving that's the way i would say and then if you really try to get the flexibility if you really want to take advantage of the the property of the resin i think 50 percent is a really like good mix the more on the flex side you go so if you go over 50 percent as we saw for example this one this one is this one is 90 percent already so that's quite a lot but you really lose a lot of strength. If I just pull it apart, it's gonna break. There is no structure. Obviously, it's really flexible, but it's not helping much. So the 50% the is a really nice compromise in terms of flexibilities and strengths. Uh, obviously, like I said, there is a lot of testing to do, I think, depending on the result you're looking for. 
So what are the pros and cons of this resin? Um, obviously it's good because you're gonna add some flex. I mean, that's what is it for. So you add some flex, you add some strength, depending on the testing you're gonna do, that's really what you're gonna shine. And you, you have a good quality print. Uh, depending on your mix, you get good quality. So it's not like a shitty resin by any means. But then there is a lot of cons, I think. Uh, first is the price. It's twice the price as normal resin. And normal resin is expensive already, so I think it's not the kind of things you're gonna buy all the time. There is the odor as well. Uh, it's really, really smelly. As soon as you open the bottle, you can smell it. When you're printing, the heat from the screen really spread the odor everywhere. Uh, you really want to have your printer somewhere far in your house and open the window and make sure it's gonna go away because you're gonna smell it for like the whole day, even the day after. So the odor is a really big thing. You have to take it in consideration and one less i would say one con as well is it's a bit harder to print compared to normal resin uh the, like the Ilegu is really thick the way if you move around you're gonna see like it's gonna go slow more like some cream this one is more like water even uh, it's really slippery and it's harder to print so the good side is it's kind of easier to clean but Trying to find the right setting to print it and get a good result is a bit harder, so that would be like a con as well. As a final thought, I would say that some cool resin, it's nice to try it, but it's not like crazy good or a crazy miracle. I would have to try some other brand, I think, to have a good comparison, like the Siraya Tenacious. Uh, I would definitely try to get my hand on this one and compare with the Monocure 3D. I don't want to bash the brand because they're probably all the same. Right now, I would say that that's a decent resin, not really worth the price, but that's fine. If you want to know more about the exposure time, the bottom layer and all those stuff, I will put some numbers in the description and it's gonna be some screenshot here at the end. Thank you for watching. And if you want more of those videos, make sure to subscribe and stay tuned. Bye.